handheld. Massively unsuccessful. Strict Halo's going in handhelds and NVIDIA's finally doing it. They're doing it soon. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, July 29th, 2025. Just want to start off talking about the giveaways that we have going on this Friday, August 1st. We're going to be drawing the winners for the two PCs that are being given away over on our Twitch streams, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech for an RTX 5090 gaming PC and then twitch.tv forward slash UFD music for a 9070 XT PC giveaway. We're going to be drawing the winner at 3 p.m. Eastern. And if you join the stream now or anytime within the next week, you should be able to enter and uh, see if you can win a PC for yourself in case you want one of them high-end ones. But I can tell you that one of those PCs is running Intel because the GPU was bundled with an Intel motherboard and that uh, was just required. And that was the only way I was ever going to build an Intel PC right now. And it turns out that that appears to be the sentiment of a lot lot of people out there because Friday was Intel's Q2 earnings report where we got to see just how strangely they are currently doing, especially compared to the competition. So they came out and they had a mildly flat revenue. They are up 0.2% year on year. Their earnings per share is down 12 cents year over year and their gross margin is down nine points year over year, which is not great. And essentially, if you just look at their operating income, they are at a loss right now. And if you look at the gross revenue, they are essentially stagnant, which is quite strange, especially considering the fact that every other PC company is going crazy and gaining more numbers than ever. And just in their regular gaming sector, they're flat. In their AI sector, they're flat, if not down from previous quarters. They are not doing great in essentially every area that they compete. And their Intel Foundry is mainly the place where they're losing money. If they became a fabulous company and spun this off, they would likely be profitable currently at this point, but they are investing billions of dollars into trying to get these foundries to work, which doesn't appear like it's going great for them. They say there's steady progress on Intel 18A, but that's not even the one that they need to focus on because they say that 14A is the big boy, the one that needs to succeed in order for Intel to really make the billions of dollars of investment worth it. They say in the next quarter, they should uh, be flat when it comes to operating income. They should have no profit, no loss, which is fine, I guess, better than losing money. But while Intel CEO is saying that their business hinges on 14A being successful, what they also disclosed in their 10Q filing with the SEC is that they don't have any customers for their external foundry, especially saying that one of the risk factors is securing one of those customers. And if they don't do it, they may have to pause or discontinue their pursuit of next generation leading edge process technologies, which may have significant strategic business financial operational risk reputational risks and repercussions and that they have been unsuccessful to date in securing any significant external foundry customers for any of our nodes and our prospects for securing a significant external foundry customer from 14a are uncertain so essentially they're telling the government we basically don't know if this is going to work while also trying to say to the public hey where this should work, but if they don't get any customers, then they're going to have to give it up. And why would a major company invest in a foundry that is not certain that they're actually even going to continue to make this? Imagine Apple decides to become a big company that works with them and then uh, it's not a big enough order. So Intel has to pause it and therefore Apple doesn't get their delivery and it just creates a whole cascading slew of issues. And this just looks to be terrible for Intel, mostly on the foundry side. Again, if you spin off the foundry, they're profitable. Intel is doing all right. They're not succeeding. They're not growing at a massive rate like NVIDIA and AMD are, especially in the AI sector, but they are still uh, selling fine. They're flat. They're like still profitable in those areas. It's not what Wall Street wants to see, but it is like the, the company exists at that point. But with how things are going now, I'm not sure if that's going to continue to be the case. You know, there was rumors of acquisitions happening or them again spinning off the foundry. They do have a new CEO who's trying to make some moves, especially in the earnings report, saying that that was a big thing that's happening in Q3 is that they are cutting costs significantly, but also confirming that simultaneous multi-threading or Intel calls it hyper-threading should be returning to feature CPUs in case you want that. So a lot of it's bad news bears for Intel, a lot of negative things that are being reported in their details. But on the flip side of that, let's talk about AMD's best and brightest, the Strix Halo. We've seen this being 
put into the framework desktop, Asus's ROG Flow tablet, and now we're finally getting unveilings of handhelds that are gonna be getting it. The GPD WinMax 5 getting its specs unveiled, and it's quite an intriguing one. In order for them to fit this 4060 level integrated GPU monstrous chip into the handheld, they decided to opt to take the battery out. So this handheld that has decent specs all around, 120 hertz, seven inch display, with the 16 cores, 32 threads, 8060S setup at 45 to 75 watt TDP is not gonna have an internal battery, but rather have an attachable battery pack, potentially like something the Apple Vision Pro has, or you could plug in the 120 watt DC port in order to get it to run it, because again, this is a 45 to 75 watt port part, which is significantly higher than what you typically find in gaming handhelds. Usually 40 is about as high as they top out. And so the fact that this is starting at 45 is just nuts. They haven't shown off the full design of it just yet. We're expected to get that uh, this coming Friday, August 1st at the China Joy event. They also didn't reveal specs, but Ioneo also discussing their next two, which is going to have the Strix Halo APU baked in. And they do happen to show off that it's going to have a dual fan set up to cool that massive chip. It's going to be a big PCB that's going to be slotted into the handheld. And they do say that it's going to have a built-in high capacity battery, which again, you're going to need if you're running that TDP on that chip because an 80 watt hour battery running a 75 watt chip is going to last you about an hour at max production. And it looks like according to their early design, not final version of the next two, they might be storing uh, the battery in that little bulge that's at back or that's a kickstand. And who knows? The next two is supposed to kind of compete with the WinMax 5. I'm excited for it either way. I love the Strix Halo APU. I love seeing where it's going to get stuffed and just seeing all the performance that it gives people to just play on the go. I love APUs. They continue to make all of that happen. And AMD also dropping Threadripper high-end desktop, not the pro version, not the workstation version, but rather for enthusiasts, content professionals will be able to get the 9000X series of these chips on July 31st, which happens to be this coming Thursday, revealing that it's going to be fast. It's faster than Intel and it's going to be faster than the previous generation. However, that comes with no price increase for the 6432 or 24 core variants of the CPU. So Threadripper high-end desktop launching this Thursday. The Pro version launched last week where you could buy the $13,000 9995WX and allegedly the AI Pro 9700 was supposed to launch last week with OEM customers. However, it's being found and I know this because I've been looking, you can't really find too many OEM companies that are selling these. And by too many, I mean typically either if they allow you to configure it, they have a long shipping period or they're going to be sold out as you can find in other places, but it looks like this is a ghost card at the current moment, not necessarily hitting the streets as of July 23rd. I've been playing around with a lot of like machine learning and language model stuff recently. And if you watch the live stream that we did this past Friday with our PC build, which you should check out right up there, we built my workstation, which has a RTX Pro 6000 Blackwell card. And I would love to play around with one of these R9700s, but can't get my hands on it. So uh, have to settle with 96 gigs of VRAM instead of a 32 gig card, which I could then double up to be a 64 gig setup. One of the things that I've been learning, this is just kind of a side note as I've been going down this rabbit hole of uh, just AI home server stuff, it appears like the 3090 is like the big dog when it comes to affordable server local LLM GPUs, just because you get that 24 gigs of VRAM at a much more affordable price. And with the AI Pro R9700 having 32 gigs being double the price of what you can get a used 3090 for, but having slower VRAM, the memory bandwidth on a 3090 is roughly one terabyte per second, whereas I believe it's two thirds of a terabyte on the AI Pro cards from AMD. So it's gonna be a weird proposition even for people who are uh, using GPUs for uh, language model and machine learning acceleration. So curious to see how all of that plays out. And I'm curious to see how Reese can save you money on some tech products. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, I'll jump straight into the deals for you guys. Starting off, we have this Epo Maker Tide 65, 65% wireless aluminum mechanical keyboard for only $26.49, making it $26.50 
and so on. But then next up, we have the Logitech G502X wired gaming mouse. This open box deal is going for only $42.99, making it $57 off. And lastly, we have this Corsair Vengeance DDR5 RAM kit with 96 gigabytes running at 6,000 megahertz at CL36 for only $169.99 with the coupon applied, making it $56 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm handing you a fact of bread for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like we're going to get a great deal in terms of CUDA cores when it comes to NVIDIA's N1X laptop processor that we're expecting to get debuted, hopefully in 2026. This is supposed to be the ARM CPU with NVIDIA GPU being smushed together, kind of like the Strix Halo chip that we're seeing come out from AMD, but the NVIDIA flavor of it. And we now have a benchmark that's come out, which the benchmark score is not really relevant because it's still an early production sample. However, the more interesting thing is that we now have the spec details of this chip. So the OpenCL score of 46,000 puts it at slower than an RTX 2050, which for an integrated GPU isn't bad, but considering strict Halo is putting out 4060 numbers. Hopefully this could do a little bit better, especially considering it has 20 CPU cores, 10 probably high power and 10 probably low power, but has 6,000 144 CUDA cores, which if you look at an RTX 5070 desktop, it's the same amount, 6,188. And it also lines up with the GB10 super chip and it has more GPU cores than a 5070 laptop. So theoretically it should line up somewhere. It's just gonna be about the power profile that determines how powerful that's actually gonna be able to get. And if it can get the same power envelope as a 5070 laptop, and then it should be able to outperform it in theory on just just a single chip. Now, the biggest limitation is going to be Windows on ARM. That has hampered Qualcomm and their Snapdragon Elite chips. It will likely hamper NVIDIA as well, but potentially Linux might be a good setup for these N1X laptops that might be dropping again, hopefully sometime soon. I'm excited for it. Again, APUs, really my jam. The N1X just going to be the team green version of what AMD currently has out on the market. And the double team green version of what NVIDIA already has out on the market is the RTX 50 Super Series, which we've been been talking about for a little bit but now the latest reports are that it's going to be coming out sooner rather than later with the latest rumor being that Q4 holiday launch is likely to happen for the 50 Super Series, replacing some of the GPUs that are currently out there less than a year from the initial debut of the RTX 5090, which happened to launch this past January, RTX 5080 as well being included in that launch. But the 50 Super Series is gonna have a couple upgrades, at least according to what we know, in the 5070, 5070 Ti and the 5080. With the 5080 Super getting 24 gigabytes of VRAM with an increase in the memory clock and therefore a higher memory bandwidth setup outputting over a terabyte per second. The 5070 Ti Super is also supposed to get 24 gigabytes of VRAM and it potentially will have a smaller memory bus which theoretically would give it less memory bandwidth than the 5080 Super but would still have the same amount of VRAM in case that's interesting to you and the 5070 Super is supposed to get that 18 gigabyte upgrade having three gigabyte modules which gets it that high and potentially a few more unlocked CUDA cores, 4% more cores is allegedly what's supposed to be happening there. But this would overhaul the entire lineup, giving people the VRAM that they have been asking for to some extent in these cards. Less than a year from launch and who knows what the pricing is going to be like. Obviously with the 5070, MSRP has been achievable for that card. Will they keep it at that price point? Will they upgrade it? I know a lot of the people in the comments are likely to say that they're going to charge more, but Nvidia has at least kept MSRP in check for some of their things as of late, such as the 4080 Super decreasing the price from the 4080, 5080 keeping the same price as that decreased 4080 Super price, except for when you look at the street value on the cards and the 5080 is going for anywhere from like $1,400 to $1,800 or sometimes two grand if you want a specialized version like the Hatsune Miku or the Doom Dark Ages Astral GPU from Asus. And, and then also the 5070 Ti costing like roughly $1,000 for most of them, even though I like I don't even remember what the 5070 Ti MSRP is supposed to be because they didn't release a Founders Edition. 749. Yeah, that's not happening. So likely, I maybe they'll bake in what the extra increased price is into the new MSRP or they'll still keep claiming the fake MSRP and then still have the market determine the price. And then just the Founders Editions are the ones that are going to be achievable at that price when they do surprise drops on Best Buy. We'll have to see how it all plays out. And let's see what you guys played out in the comments on Friday's episode of Hot News. We got SPR saying this MF 
look like an Oblivion NPC.